through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Diamonds on my wrist, they drippin', ice. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Diamonds on my wrist, they drippin', ice. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Diamonds on my wrist, they drippin', ice. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Came through drippin', drip, drip. Okay, folks, the Boar Fest continues. This is episode six of Drips in the Office. I am joined, as always, by the Drip Lord, Pat Ford. How are you today, sir? John, thank you for asking. I'm really good. I'm really good. Glad to hear it. Of course, uh, I'm your host, John and Warren, and damn, week two of No KMS. It's a battle. It's a grind, but we do muster up the strength to carry on. Not sure how much more Joe Rogan I could possibly listen to. But uh, but no, we've had some great content on the network. Uh, and I know you and I are both sick in the head, so we don't really miss a show there. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can uh, have a great one for you tonight. <laughs> so without further ado, I do just have to say, and I mean this, I truly, truly, truly don't care how many times your printer ran out of toner, how cool you thought you were switching the water jug in the office, or how much that group chat at work talked about the eclipse today. This will still be the most boring part of your week. And Pat, I'd like to start off with a question. Uh, believe it or not, I do, li- you know, when you're on the show, you're talking, I'm listening. As boring as it may be, I listen. You. So I get questions. My first question is what is it about the parking industry, or maybe it's just your company in general, but why is everything so conference heavy or so seminar heavy? Is there a reason behind that? Yes. Yes, there is. But first, if I could ask a question, I feel very rude that I skipped by in the intro. How are you, John? You always ask me how I am. Let's let's return the favor. How are you? Just a classy guy all around. Thank you. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm doing everything I possibly can to survive until Thursday. That's when we're going away for vacation. So I am just kind of I'm crawling by. I'm scraping by uh, doing everything I can to make it to there. Good. Good. I'm glad. I hope you have. I hope you have a great vacation. I hope you have a great vacation. That reminds me too. I, w- I want to touch on that solar eclipse at some point. Um, I just w- we'll kick that down the road. But I'm I have a thought as well. Your, so uh, I'm going to go back to your initial question here. Why is why is why are the seminars and why are the conferences so important? On paper, they're not because I've been to the EV conference. I went to. I've been to a couple leadership conferences. It's not necessarily about what you're getting out of the conference per se. It's about the networking. It's about the connections. And Mm. everyone who's there with you, they also have that same mindset. And sometimes the hardest part is just walking up to somebody and be like, hey, I'm Pat Ford, um, blah, 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 Ford, blah, blah, blah. Nice to meet you. Got to be a little more charismatic than that. But one thing that I've taken into effect over my career, I don't think that's the right phrase. We're out of there early. Um, One thing I've always factored into my whole career during this is the pre-scout. Yeah, thank you. And almost the creep, as I call it. The creep. Oh, when I'm so in a conference prior to, prior to, during, and after. Listen, I love EV charging. No one can deny it. <laughs> it's exhilarating. <laughs> it's exhilarating. But I don't fucking need it in my life for eight hours. One thing you always have to be on the lookout for at these conferences, and that's why they're so important. Fucking dog. Pardon me. Um, One thing about these conferences that's so important is surveying the individuals in the room. Always have to wear your glasses so you can see names and corporations on name tags. And one thing that I do is I always pay attention to people's level of attention. Now, what does that mean? Wow. Wow. Exactly. Next level stuff right there. Now, if you got somebody who's super, super dialed in and they're from a municipality, they're from a private sector, they're from the real estate sector. At that point, if I look over and I see him taking very detailed notes about, let's just use the example of EV charging, my head goes, boom, that's a guy right there who could use a couple charge ports. So hold on, right let's there. let's set the let's kind of set the scene here. So sure. someone might be on a stage, they're on a mic. You guys are in the crowd. He's talking. You're listening, but you're scouring the crowd as well to see what everybody's doing. Correct. I'm a huge component of the cross leg sit. Growing up, I always thought it would just decrease like your nuts and your semen, but I have like a kid and one on the way, so it doesn't matter anymore. So watch. I'll do a little, a little impromptu example, right? So 
straight ahead, my cam, my light, I got a light. Um, that's the speaker. Now, without being rude and detracting attention to the speaker, it's just a simple, oh, I got to stretch it out and turn. Across oh, the but right that. there, yeah. I just wipe the entire right hand side of the room. Scanned. Give, give it fifteen minutes. Yeah, the you gotta get one of those. Going. Yep. Then you, then you cross this way. At that point, I'm then zoning in on everybody in that room, even for a split second, to see their level of interest. If somebody's just dozing off or not really doing anything, kind of looking out into the clouds, I can even start a conversation with. Geez, that's a lot of you be charging, huh? Or. <laughs> They're writing a lot of stuff down. I'll go up to them, shoot the hay, tell them how great I thought everything was. And generally from there, you'll get like, yeah, we're looking for it at X garage. We're looking for it at X lot. Hey, I can help you with that. So conferences are more than comes to the, meets the eye. So you're basically, when you're scanning the room, you're basically the Jason Bourne of parking, but you're not looking for exits and who might be carrying. You're just looking for the EV guy. You're looking for the garage guy. And nothing's getting past you. I love that Jason Bourne comparison. I'm going to update my LinkedIn with that. But yes, precisely. I am on the scowl like like my, I was going to say, like my kid's been taken. That's not even, is that Jason Bourne? No, no that's, that's Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson. Yeah. In taken. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Anyway, scratch that. But no, I'm I'm more surveying the room and, you know, you really have to utilize three things. The beginning. Wow. If it starts at 830, get there at 8. Have a croissant with somebody. Sure. The lunch breakout is very, very important. Always let people cut you in line. Hey, come on over. Cut. Yeah, go ahead. The line's long. Yeah, forget I love that. people if you're zoned in on your target. And then the after party. There's not really an after party at conferences, but just kind of like the mingling after the fact. Always have the afternoon coffee. Ready. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coffee breaks yep. here and there. A little potty break when you see somebody. That's another thing, too. If you see somebody you got your eye on for a, for a potential property, if they're going to take a dump, guess what you're doing? Oh yeah, you're right there. You're right one out right with them. Yep, yep. absolutely. Yep. Yep. I love that. I we're not crazy conference heavy. I mean, I'm sure <clears throat> they happen in my industry. I've only really ever been sent to one big one. If anyone's in the the medical device industry, actually at Gritty's uh, before the live show, one guy did come up to me and said he was in the the same business. But it's called uh it's called MedTrade. So every year, MedTrade, a bunch of the medical device sales uh, companies come down to one spot. There's vendors everywhere. You kind of, same thing. You kind of get to shake hands, talk to people in the business. So a couple of years ago, I got sent down to Atlanta and it was this Ooh, big, Atlanta. Yeah, it was, it was cool. I had never been there before. Uh, big, you know, like convention center. Everyone's got like their little desk set up. You mentioned uh, LinkedIn earlier. What it reminded me of is, every generic person that you see on LinkedIn, it was them in real life. Like, you know, when you're on LinkedIn and you, there's people have those statuses that are just like generic, like leadership or, Oh, I interviewed 10 people from Yale, but I hired the janitor. Like, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> it was just that in, in real life. Uh, but it was, now, do it was you, good. Do you have LinkedIn premium? I do not. No, I, I don't really go on expensive. LinkedIn anymore. Is that $70 the one where you can, like, a month? You can sneak on people's profiles, but they can't see that you you look at there. So that that's why I pay for it. To be honest with you, I get yeah. I pay the extra seventy bucks just so I can look at somebody's profile without them knowing I looked at it. Yeah, that is nice. Whole thing. Yeah. Go on, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, the real reason I wanted to bring it up to you specifically is there was an after party, and the after party was held by one of the large dropship vendors. So this place is somewhere out in the Midwest. They house a ton of medical equipment and then different companies like ours could partner with them. So if you don't have something in your warehouse, you could drop ship it to a customer. Anyway, they Fair. were throwing a huge party at an aquarium. And not only any aquarium, it is the Atlanta Aquarium, which is one of the largest in the world. Uh, and it was, you walk into this aquarium, they've got like a, a DJ set up, dance floor, Things are going wild. Like you're sitting there listening to Pitbull, and all of a sudden a bottlenose dolphin is swimming by your head. Um, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> oh, maybe not. But I thought I would throw some uh, throw some of these Atlanta uh, what is it aquarium facts at you. All right, you ready for this? The I don't only, think so, but I don't have a choice. <laughs> only uh, only aquarium in North America to have both manta rays and whale sharks. There are 10 million gallons of water at this aquarium, oh. 
and it once was the biggest aquarium in the world until those bastards in Singapore took the crown in 2012. Fucking pricks. I'm still not over that. No, we never will be. You you would have loved it, Pat. You, I think the you get down there at some point. That's fascinating. That those two animals. I mean, maybe they don't coexist, but they have to in an ocean. Maybe they're predators. What a manta ray and a whale shark. Yeah. Well, whale whale shark. So I don't think it's really a predator per se. Like, it's very just, docile. Yeah, very docile. yeah. They I think they eat shrimp as a whole with the mouth open and just kind of you know coast and eat, <laughs> kind of like I did pre diet. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> I was gonna say krill, but I don't know if that even. Oh, I think you're right. I think it is krill. Very trip. good. Very yeah. good. Yeah, I went to the aquarium this weekend. Not the same. No DJ, no pit bull. Just no. <laughs> little fucking kids running around. Some kid put some kid pushed my son. Oh my god. I almost oh, yeah? I almost threw him in the fucking shark tank. Swear to God. Thought about it. But there it's a petting tank anyway, so I think he'd be fine. But mm, I wanted to fucking throttle that kid. By I met way, him in the park a lot. I saw a picture of this aquarium that you've been talking about. It's, it's not the most impressive place, place I've ever seen in my life. It's just like a brick building in a parking lot. <laughs> we'll cut that. Uh... <laughs> It Speaking is a diet. warehouse. Let me go because you just insulted them. The fine folks okay. at Biomes, no free ads. But if you <laughs> no want to throw up a logo, I'm fine with that because they've done me good. Biomes is a magical place with over 100 aquariums throughout the facility. And yes, it is a warehouse. And yes, I feel bad for some of the fish because <laughs> the tanks are mighty small. But it's a magical place and your children would love it. So don't judge. I'm just looking out for you because someone sent me a picture of it. Maybe it was... Ha- Maybe it was a bad day, but I'm just worried they're going to find you in the dumpster in the back someday, Pat. I don't, I don't know. Man. Probably will. <laughs> Pet the wrong fish. They just chuck me. Uh, you just touched on your diet. I actually, I got to compliment you. Um, I'm, I'm jealous of your diet because I think every day I tell myself before I head into the office, I'm going to wake up a little earlier, maybe do a home workout, maybe okay. meal prep. It doesn't happen. And then when I'm at work, I say to myself, all right, when you get home, that's it. You know, hit hit the weights, maybe eat right, do some chicken, some salmon. That doesn't happen either. As a matter of fact, on the way home from work today, I stopped and picked, picked up a pizza and some buffalo wings. I'm out of control, Pat. I, I need you to guide me in the right direction. So a couple things. Listen, I'm no expert. I've been at this for carry the six. About two weeks, right? Down 10 pounds. I mean, the numbers talk for themselves, so I appreciate you pointing that out. It's not just the lighting, is it? I've I've come to the conclusion that there's only one way I'm going to be able to do this. In my head, mentally, I'm on Ozempic, but I'm not. Mm. I got really sick on my birthday. Thank you, everybody who reached out, all four people. Um, really sick, 103 temperature, the whole kit and caboodle. It was, just, it, was, it was a nightmare. But ever since then, I haven't really had an appetite. But... I will tell you, I need to get better. So we'll get better together. It's very difficult to do. Luckily, I have Kendall Tool. Do you know who Kendall Tool is? I'm assuming this is a, a bike uh, trainer situation. In the words of my friend Steve from Gloucester, oofy freaking maloofy. Oh, we, awesome. are, we are cooking all. We took a ride through Italy last night. Um, very nice. You can do scenic rides. Um, but if you're I, on the road, what are you doing? If, if you're on the road? Yeah, like are you are you packing something or are you just stopping off and getting a salad somewhere? Oh, you're just hitting the water, huh? PRC level. Sorry, I got I lost a jug. I threw it away by accident. Out of, out of, so I got a <clears> Voss <throat> bottle. Not a big deal. Um, no, I'm trying to eat as little as possible. And if I do eat, I'll just force salad down my gullet and just deal with it. But I still have that same vice. Um, I'm, my life's full of stress. I got I got you know a kid in the way. I got a kid. I got a very high high pace job and i've told you and i don't we don't promote drug use on this show but every once in a while i like to pop a gummy in the evening and just kind of settle down a little bit it helps yeah. my, it helps my mental as the kids say but with that get I into ate, those cupboards man i ate three italian ices in like 12 minutes last night now they're only 100 calories but i think I, but justin says it's only calories that matter but I think there's more to it. But yeah, I still have those. So if it wasn't for the dope, <laughs> I'd, probably be, I'd probably be down 15 pounds. But listen, you got to live a little. You do. You do have to live a little. Um, mm. 
Pardon oh, me. Flu- fluid exercise is the hardest thing, man. I haven't been able to get out of bed in two weeks. So I have. I just kind of roll out. This morning, I fell getting out of bed. My foot oh. gave out. Put too much it's... pressure on it running yesterday. Well, you, dude, you just turned 31. Yeah, the big 3-1. Yeah, you that'll know, happen. Your, your feet I'm, almost out of calendar up, I'm almost out of calendar days. That's really scary. Um, but yeah, I fell out of bed and crawled. And then I, I have plantar fasciitis. I don't know. If I've you, had it. If you, I've had it. It's absolutely I, terrible. I live with it. It's a real shame. I lost my foot brace that I use when I sleep. So I got to try to find that so I can counteract this. But listen, the exercise is the hardest thing. Get some Kendall tool in your life. It's forty four ninety five a month. And you'll be, you'll be riding that fucking bike all over the damn country. <laughs> I'll tell you, she's a I, specimen. I, I got to do something. And now I think I, I said this to you maybe off air, but they're going to be putting me on the road a little bit more. And I'm Ooh. a little bit, I'm more worried about that because I do okay with, so lunch in the office, a, a lot of people around me, they eat out every day. I'm pretty good about the leftover situation. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but on the road, man, I, I'll have no self-control. I'm going to be going from hospital to hospital, meeting these doctors, shaking hands, garnering business, looking for referrals. And I'm going to be at, dude, I'm, I'm going to Mickey D it. I'm going to be at Chipotle. Like it's, it's just going to happen. Listen, I, I spoke to a diet, dietitian when I was actually in Portland. I actually ran into one. Uh, what is that? Are we a PRCB? CB, uh, CBR? I don't know. Yeah. I ran into a, a very well known dietitian there. Power Dave, lunch, by the way. Yeah, it was a power lunch. Goodness gracious. Um, Dave Cullinan, the dietitian, he told me mm-hmm. that he's been just eating healthy four days out of the week. And the other three, he indulges in such delicacies as, such as pizza. Um, so you I could go that route. I don't Posture's big, too. That. Ever since he, he fixed his posture, I think that kind of flattened the belly. I think that has something to do with it. So. He's got to be six foot five. I'm telling you, the guy was a goddamn skyscraper. Tall, he was definitely mustache. wearing lifts. Definitely wearing lifts. But God bless him nonetheless. Thank you for the dietary help. Um, but yeah, anyway, I didn't mean to deflect. You're on the road more? What does that mean, Joe? No, I will be. There. We're looking at um, May into June. I'm going to start getting out there on the road. Uh, actually, a lot of Connecticut stuff, believe it or not. And then, if, yeah. and then Rhode Island, which will be a little bit easier but yeah well, all that what that means for me is um keeping relationships that we already have with referrals so doctors nurses things like that and then finding new business whether that be from a primary care um or like i said a hospital whether it be neurologist pulmonologist uh internist it doesn't doesn't really matter i might have just made that up uh um, yeah, yeah it's lucy burge internist exactly <laughs> call me uh <laughs> never mind uh yeah so and i actually think there's going to be a little bit of an art to wearing different hats like Ooh. i gotta when i'm on the road i gotta be that personable shaking hands where i where i'm in the office it's more crunching the numbers opening up my pivot tables <sighs> by the way Huge Excel community out there. Who would have thought the Minifan world? <laughs> Pardon <laughs> I, me. We almost There's have to give a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> the the V lookup community is immense because they are, and they're better than the pivot to, pivot chart. I, and community. they want you to know about that. It. They'll tell you. <laughs> shout out the the v, what is it the V the V, v lookups man. I was the getting V lookups blown up. She called the she called the Z lookups. Yeah. Z, Ziggy. <laughs> It is feeling okay. and I was getting. I'm not even ready to bring because I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna, I guess, since I brought it up, I'll try Sumif tables, Sumif, Sumif, Sumif tables. I, I'm more comfortable talking about V lookups, so I think we'll, it's Subu, Subu, Subaru. Yeah, but but he ruined Excel, he ruined Excel. He used to love Excel, and then he was fucking, he wouldn't, he wouldn't shut up about it at the bar of Portland. Yep, yep, yep. yep. You're my buddy. I love you. I was like, what the fuck? Get this guy away from me. Uh, but anyway, this shoot, I don't know what that is. I Listen, I got to get into the pivot table game first. Then I can go to the J tables or the Z tables and the Subifs. Um, it, it'll do you some good. Uh, totally, totally unrelated. But something I thought about today, because my Instagram algorithm apparently knows that I like this. As far mine as likes like, boobs. Well, yeah, well, we'll go there. Uh mm-hmm. I think my AMS, uh, ASMR, is that what they call it? A- ASMR, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Watching guys wash windows. It's it's just, it's yeah. a drug for me. I When a guy can just, he's in, he's first of all, he's standing in that thing maybe, and he's got that that nice wiper. And you know, they're, they're 
fucking putting it on. Like it looks like Picasso. They, they are paintists. It's it's wonderful, and I think that is a very that's a drip job. Like you're not oh, sitting yeah. in an office, but you're just doing nothing all day besides just wiping a window. I'd argue that it's a drip job because it's kind of terrifying being up that high. Like I don't do well with heights. And I've seen videos where like, the, are you talking about like the window washers that go up on the skyscrapers? Well, and stuff? Both, both. I, you, you could be standing Stop on the that. ground. I, I just, I just like the hand motion. I love when they'll put like the soap on it. And then in one flick of the wrist, they've touched every single, I'm going to keep doing this by the way, uh, sure. they've touched every single spot. So by the time they're done with it in one motion, that soap is completely gone and I'm done. I've finished by then at that point. <laughs> <laughs> If it was I was laughing and coughing. Nailed it. Nailed but my TikTok algorithm is Somalian pirates. It's Somalian pretty cool. Pirates. Yeah, it shows them like boarding ships and robbing people. It kind of gets me like nervous for bed, but I know we were talking about Instagram, but I was talking about algorithms. So yeah, Somalian pirates are everywhere. I can't get rid of it. I like a good Somalian pirate. I, I've I, actually related to that. I'll watch it's those videos like, before we go down a, a huge rabbit hole. Those videos where it's those ships in the middle of sea. And you see those huge waves going, and the ship kind of lifts up and crashes the, down. The Dude. music's always the same too. It's like yo. Oh yeah, that's best. Yeah, that gets me fired up. I love that I, too. I'm that's just a great looking point. at it on my tiny phone, and my heart is pounding just watching the the ship go up and down. Yeah, I chip my pants. No way, I don't do well with that or water. Don't anyway, do well but, many things. Go ahead. Still, those guys though, like, dude, sit in an office for. Eight hours and then come home and talk yeah, to me. You know what I'm saying? You heard of plantar fasciitis? You have to move yeah. the feet or else it really fucks you up. So enjoy your boat. You Absolutely. Uh, all right, we're gonna uh, switch up the topics. I gotta, I gotta talk to you about some, uh, some daycare and some preschool stuff. But before that, uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, and I believe we have something for the people here, Pat. Ooh. This is crack. All right, that was great. Yay! That I we we know what was just played. Definitely, so it might was have been really my, good. My favorite video. I hope uh, you all enjoyed it. So you said you guys have been. So your son's not in preschool yet, but you're looking at preschools. Do I have that right? Monday, we we locked in on one, but we've been doing the grand tour of the Rhode Island um, county that I live in. And I will this be five days a week? Three half days to start. Yep. Mom. You nervous? Um, no, I want him to get kind of like the socialization factor, and not thrilled about him potentially getting sick. But I mean, it builds up the immu mm -hmm. immunity, and yeah, I'm a great dad. Throw, let's start with that. But we're we're full on terrible twos right now. Oh yeah, full on. Yeah. So there is a slight potential in the back of my head that like maybe there'll be a kid there. It's like, hey, like. When they go to bed, like I've learned that it's best to just go to bed or like, yeah, you don't have to hit your dad. Like he's just trying to change the channel. Like maybe there'll be like that one voice of reason kid. That's what I'm really pulling for. But yes, I am. I am nervous. So you're hoping that there's another two year old that's going to talk reason into into yours. Right, listen, I think he's in a two to three it. class. I think okay. he's in a two All to three. Right. But imagine how great that would be if some kids like everybody gather around, like respect your parents. Like snack time is not dinner. Like we don't need goldfish to go to bed. Just go to bed. And like comes home, <laughs> like hey, I'm changed. Like thanks for all your hard work, Dad. So we found a school that we're probably going to accept for him to go to. I liked it. Nice facility, clean, the whole gambit. But, but as far Only as the teachers teacher. are concerned, well, we're purple hair, dude, blue hair, like all over the place. And I don't. We're we're talking. He's gonna come home. Climate change, this fucking you know, humping like, Kamala Harris. Oh, know. I'm worried about it. That's my only concern. I, I didn't, I didn't necessarily say it's my wife, but we left her in the car, and she's like, "Oh, what'd you think?" In the back, I'm just like, "Blue hair, dude. Blue hair. What am I gonna do?" Terrifying. Yeah, listen, we don't judge a book by its cover, but if it's a liberal book, we throw it in the trash and burn it. Am I right, fellas? No, <laughs> up, no yeah. just kidding. Maybe she's normal. I doubt it. I have a I have a college fund. I have a private school fund saved up for my son already, just in case one of those woke nerds is this like elementary school teacher. I'll pull him out of there fast so you could say Jack Rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> the one thing is, though, that kids—I was—I I actually think I was trying to convince myself of this. 
kids naturally want to be defiant. So maybe if the teacher is liberal and woke, they will their natural reaction will be to do the opposite. Again, this is what I'm telling myself. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, hope that'd be great. That'd be great. But there's probably a decent chance he's going to go to a rally or something or something. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just great. keep sticking that baseball bat in, in his hands and hope for the best. Although he's probably just going to use it to smash a police station. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know about you, but we're, we're, we're hitting the spring. <laughs> oh, I, the, my, my son's preschool teacher seems great. She's blonde and all that good stuff. But yeah. Is she, showing up, on your, uh, is she showing up on your Instagram algorithm yet? so great. Only fans teacher. So I, I took uh, I took him out. It's, it's so hard, as you know, to get things done that you want to do. When you've got the kids, especially I've got two, you're gonna, you know, realize this anytime. It's hard enough with one, but I really wanted to get out in the yard and start doing a little bit of yard work. Now that we're getting into the spring, so I had to take him with me, which was cool. He's in the yard. He's got the rake, so I was shaking up the earth a little bit. You know what I mean? I was moving some dirt around. Hell yeah! I, Shut up, I put I put some fertilizer down. No big deal. Did Crabgrass killer, early spring stuff. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And I know you're the son of a landscaper. What do you think? Uh, yeah what what did you use i don't remember okay that's good <laughs> spray radius is probably accurate compared to what it was supposed to be but no that's a great first step is critical for the summer i yeah. i have first step lined up for this weekend um i bought a couple bags from lesco my dad's got the license so i get to go to the big boy stores grab my go. own stuff but yeah i'm gonna get my my kid into that early too but fertilizer is a good move you got dogs what? Gotta be careful I have to, for the first 24 hours. I know, I know, I know. I one year I did the uh it's like the dog safe stuff, but it doesn't it doesn't do yeah, it. I don't you trust get the poison. Yeah, yeah. I don't trust it. Yeah, then lo- the poison's gonna kill the shit, including the dog. But um, yeah, no, that's that's fantastic news. That's fantastic news. I'm gonna plant a tree this year. I have a spot Are planted, you? I have a spot picked out where I'm gonna dig a hole and plant a tree. So I'm really excited about that too. So right. I think it's gonna be a good landscaping year. I really do. I'm gonna dedicate some time to it. This Plus, is going to be skinny. It'll be nice to pop the top out there. Oh yeah, spread around the hood neighborhood. If we could, we could, uh, we maybe, maybe film your, uh, your tree planting with your buff bod. I mean, I, I'd be, yeah. It. Give me down another fifteen pounds. I'll be, I'll be. I might go back to Portland, jump on stage, and just rip the thing off again to prove a point. But we're not there yet. We still got to cut out the three Italian ices. Your answer here might be. It's it's going to be big on how you answer this. I think. I assume you do mulch, right? Hell yeah. What color mulch? Great question. Don't say red. Uh, Are you red guy? No, no, no. no. Okay. Light brown. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Light brown's good. Light brown or what? dark brown? Yeah. Depends yeah. on the part of the house. I'd usually do dark in the front, light in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> We're off the rails. We're off the rails. Uh, I think I only had one more thought. Well, aren't you? You're you're not a red guy, correct? As no, I'm not a red guy. I mean, here's Good. the thing: when I, when you're driving around and you see the red, does it pop? Sure, but it's corny looking, and I just I don't buy into it. It's a lot of times it's dyed I, the the red, so I like a little yeah. El Natural look. So I do like a nice a nice brown. Yeah. I made the mistake That's last year of um, I put it down too early. I got ahead of myself. Like I went out there and I edged everything. I was edging. And uh, that was a joke. <laughs> and uh, I got I got ahead of myself, and I was like, "Oh, we're all we're all edged up and ready to go. Let me put the mulch down." So then, halfway through the summer, it already kind of looked worn down. And then, just you know, the kids and the dogs running through it, it just didn't look nice and tidy through the rest of the summer how I wanted it to. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, don't make that mistake this year. Learn from your mistakes. We'll be all set. I'm gonna do mulch. I think in two weeks. Yeah, wow! All right, out. I'll end up. And y'all do it all right. <laughs> yes yes now are you get are you doing are you doing bags or do you have someone come and drop off a couple of yards we'll drop off a couple of yards in the driveway yeah. dump yeah. it in there blow dry the driveway not blow dry um backpack yep. blower yep. <laughs> clean it up we're all set blow right in the neighbor's yard my neighbor is just a fucking i hope she doesn't listen to the show if she does shout out robin um but she doesn't know where the fucking my yard line is so i bought string last year Right. Oh, Listen to this. I bought string to put on the the posts to do an indicator. You gotta sound the, like an asshole. <laughs> what? She ran it over. She ran over the string. There was string everywhere. 
So is it so do your driveways are that is that what's close? Yes, our drive no, not really. It's like my driveway is here and then there's the I have my side yard, she has her side yard and then it's okay. her house. So she how the hell did she drive through it? What she a lawnmower stopped. or a car? Yes, on lawnmower. So like I I deliberately put a line down and a, a string down. I was like, okay, here's the deal. Know. Like I've had this conversation with you, Robin, and like you're not listening. I don't care if you're 75. Like you still mow your own lawn. So I don't. I we have a problem. And I'm like kind of peeking out the garage as she's mowing. Just fucking rips the thing right up. Shoot up everywhere. It's just a fucking disaster. So <laughs> I have big problems with Robin this year and her fence that abuds mine is rotted and it's just not a good look i don't have a homeowner association but i might make one just to, ugh, listen i'm going on a rampage robin's uh, super she's probably super nice but i don't like robin pat if we're gonna go there i got a story for you we, sure i i love my neighborhood i like all the people in my neighborhood there's just these one neighbors that for some reason want to give everybody shit right so across the street from my house it, we're, it's a small little neighborhood there's only maybe four or five of us there Across the street is just like a lot, but it's woods, like okay. trees, you know, woods, dirt, dirt, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. birds, squirrels. Uh, so when I do like yard work, if I had or if there's a storm uh, and there's branches and I'm kind of collecting the branches, I'll just go across the street. I'll throw shit across the street every once in a while when I'm cutting the grass, if I'm bagging the grass, if I don't feel like putting it in the bags, I'll go and throw it in the woods across the street. Now, mind 100%. you. I only do that because I, when I first moved in, I had seen other neighbors doing that. So I was like, okay, it's open season over here. Plus, by the way, it's fucking woods. What's the big deal? She doesn't own this lot or this couple doesn't own the lot, <clears throat> but apparently they have an issue with it. So much so that I was working right where I'm sitting right now in my little home office one day and my wife's grandmother was upstairs with the kids. I heard a knock on the door, but I'm like, I'm working. She gets the door. I don't think much of it. Later, I go upstairs and she's like, hey, uh, there was a police officer at the door. He gave, Shut up. He was looking for you. He gave me his card. He wants you to call him. So I contacted him. He's like, hey, uh, have you been throwing stuff in the woods across the street? And I was like, no. Why? He's like, oh, well, you know, you someone. Lied. You took lied. Oh, yeah, I, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he goes, have you seen anybody else doing it? And I was like, no, I can't, can't tell you that I have. And he's like. He's like, all right, well, I just want to let you know that this, if we throw stuff back there, it could uh, cause a brush fire. I so bad because I knew instantly, by the dude, when you look back there, it's just piles of brush, like without me throwing it there. Like the brush is just naturally falling on the ground. That's so, how woods work, dickhead. Sorry. It, I respect the police. Dude, it's so, uh, it's so passive aggressive though, because I know she called and still she's walking the dog by or like we're driving by. Hey. How you go? How's it going? How you doing? And I'm just like you sent the police to my fucking house. She sounds like the worst, and I hate her. And despite her, I think you should light one of the piles of mulch on fire just to be like, yeah, you called it. And so what I in the eyes. what I thought about doing was when the cop was like, "Have you ever seen any of your neighbors doing it?" I wanted to be like, "Yeah, so and so and her husband." Down the, the old road. hag down yeah. the way. She's been, been throwing stuff back there since 97. 2018. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But that reminds me, are you a uh, wave to everyone in the neighborhood guy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me too. A thousand percent. Drives my wife nuts. Anybody's getting the two fingers. Mm -hmm. I can even tell that, that there's some neighbors terrible. that are sick of it. They're like, we, they're like, do we still have to wave to this guy? <laughs> like, I'm throwing this, and they're like, uh, and get a head nod every once in a while. But I, I wave to everybody. But Robin's on my on my right right now. This is where Robin is. The people on my left hate my fucking guts and i don't know why i think i do Wait, so you are you do you have enemies on either side of you right now kind of i don't think robin hates me like i hate her so i think it's like kind of one-sided <laughs> but this guy over here whose name i i won't say and his wife's name who i won't say so rude i always say hello i always ask him how the kids are all this stuff i don't even get answers anymore what i think happened Mm, tell me. Was when 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 I was boozing, me and my neighbor we used to booze, mm, booze. Yep. My neighbor across the street, my best, he's one of my best friends. Um, we were boozing. I think we were walking back and forth between houses, had a few in us. Then uh, the woman next to us, I think, I think my neighbor said she was hot, and I think she overheard it. That's all I can think of. But uh, yeah, I, I got beef on both sides. I'm good across the street, but left and right is hell. 
I tell you what, if there was two young women who were boozing walking down the street and i overheard them say i was hot i'd be upset oh too i would be i'd be very what? upset pat i i I'd, I'd hold a grudge man i really would oh yeah that'd be that'd be awful if someone's <laughs> found me found me handsome it, almost as bad as someone leaving you 200 dollars for house sitting it's just a, i don't know how many times i have to say it's a scumbag move i'd spot him the 100 back just to say <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> uh all right as we transition into the barren kms topic oh uh, i'm like kms it's been uh, I've been, it's been tough impact it's tough it is tough i hope maybe we'll get a surprise show this week i don't know i don't want to every day I, every day i hope i wake up to a tweet show today 10 o'clock i would just i, I would cancel my day I'd quit my job i'd do whatever just to be there but well it, it it'll make it that much better when it comes back that's it's true like that's a great yourself. way to look at it that's a great way to look at it um but so I'm thinking of some some network stuff. Um, I mean, today they dropped that that new kind of small show that segment uh, beyond the third chair. I love the idea of it. I think it's I think it's cool. I think it's creative. Uh, ironically enough, because it was Cinema Lord, I thought it was a little too short, which was his gripe with Mike and the Minute fans. <laughs> but uh, but no, I again I, I kind of like the idea, and I did think. I think they could have gone into detail a little bit more about the job unless that really like what he showed is is kind of it. And like he said, a monkey could do it. But like looking at the machines and like shaping the glasses, I look, we're doing a drip show. So, of course, I find that interesting. Right up our alley. And honestly, one thing I found fascinating about that that I did not know, Cinema Lords does not like Steve from Gloucester. No. Can you believe it? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, it's news. They broke. I think Jesus Justin broke news. Christ. Yeah, breaking news. I was floored. <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. Like I said, it's they. I I don't mind when people, or especially like the the show, like Justin Coleman, when they throw shit out there. Like if they have an idea, throw it out there. Like why not? You know, especially to down week like this, it makes you wonder if because this seems like kind of like a Justin project. Like does Coleman have something up his sleeve? Or are they working on something together? It's a great question. Who knows. By the way, he looked pretty slim in that video. He really That's did, cool. and I, I'm I'm all for more content. Like even if people, the people are wild recently. They're like, I can't even watch the show anymore because all of these other shows on the YouTube feed. Like, buddy, it's not that fucking hard to figure it out. Like, you'll 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 be okay. Right. So that was a that was another show. Uh, uh, not on this network, on the uh, the the other network, as they say. Um, gathering of the goats not sure if you if you watch that they were definitely throwing some shade at the drips but i think i want to take the high road really because yeah frankly i i like those guys so um we, we have can, we we can take the high road we, due to being over what are you five, five we're over five <laughs> feet let's just put it that way so we can take the high road others we can we can and we will so i want to actually want to share a, a highlight tape of gathering the goats because i thought those were good oh, great. Yeah, so, yeah, so, good so check that out in case you guys missed it. Here you go. Imagine you get a couple margaritas in her. She's like, she's howling, you know, she's howling. She, mm. she, uh, I, I didn't even listen to this episode. I, I only got people on from across the street from the FOMO, on the FOMO show, hoping they would get in trouble. Like that was my only plan. Hello? All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, wow, what, 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 electric! I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm, I am worried that we'll show that and then people will move across the street. Um, oh, so there's something yeah. to be concerned about. And if and if that's the case, and if our wonderful producers think so, maybe they'll have to cut it. Um, sure. That's a good point. That's any good point. other network thoughts or KMS thoughts in general? Like, do you have any predictions for the week? Did you like any of the show? Well, I'm, I know you like the shows, but any thoughts from the shows this past week with no uh, uh, show? One, one kind of thought that I had is that Stephen Gloucester might wind up running for Senate at some point. He's just mm -hmm. on an all-time heater. It would make sense right now. Um, the rundown was great, I will say. Um, I know he was out kind of doing some farm work, but Sheldon was missed. No offense to uh, Ziggy and Red. I think they did a they did a great job. But Sheldon's Sheldon's just the he's the fuel that makes the tractor go. You know what I wow. mean? A little farming <laughs> reference. He's the he's the bale of hay. That feeds the. He's a bale of hay. Right? Yeah, he's yeah. a bale of hay. He a bale I, of hay. I can't wait until those three unite. I oh, really can't wait for the, that. That's gonna be the best threesome of all time. I'm telling you, because I thought great. 
Fa- fantastic episode. Uh, Ziggy, I'm not mad at you for, for saying how short I was because you really did make up for it. Uh, talking about my dance moves, I, I really took that to heart. And yes, I was. Call me fat. No biggie. Yep. <laughs> no biggie. Uh, so I do. I, can't give him an A plus because Sheldon wasn't there, but we're at a solid A A minus on on the rundown. Um, Mike in the middle fans. 420 show. 420 show. I actually really enjoyed the the 420 show. I like those guys. I don't really know what's going on, but I think that's kind of the allure of it. I mean, oh yeah, sign me yeah. up. Yeah, that was that was a great show. Um, Mike the Minute fans. Mike the Minute fans was good. Controversial figure. Uh, if, if anybody's if anybody's watching this, and like just reach out to the guy. He's deep down. He is a good guy, but like I, I grew up near the Cape, so I've seen what that stuff can kind of do to people firsthand, right? And I just see it kind of like tor- uh, not torpedoing, um, tumbleweeding, right? Oh, it's tumbleweeding. He's in a bad spot. <clears throat> he was in a bad spot when he did that. I think it was like a nine-hour show they did after Portland. Uh, but yeah, just say a, say a quick prayer for him if you're a man or woman of God, and if you're not, let him go. He'll be fine. Yeah, well, we hope he can find his way. We we're hearing some scary things out of his camp, so really we'll bad things. Um, PRC was funny. Uh, yep. <laughs> he is going to strike out every Everybody. bit of hand, and whether you like it or not, I think actually he's going to go more. He's going to show up at your house and just throw gas. It's just going to be 99 on the black with movement, as Prez used to say. Yep. Uh, no, he's, so that, he's, he's a closer. He's a starter. Whatever it is, he's going to ring up all heat. <laughs> That's right. Montante, yeah. Montante doesn't stand a chance. Montante went, rolls out of bed and throws 86, so I don't know what the, what the issue could be. I think if he did that, his arm would fall off. Oh, my God. That shoulder Remember, imagine that shoulder. Won't be able to tip um, these back anymore. He'll find <laughs> it's drinking <laughs> drink anymore because he threw 86. Uh all right. Well, we're spiraling. So I think we're gonna yeah. we're gonna close up shop for tonight. Any final thoughts for the people, Pat? Lights off for me. Can I take something from you? Sure. It was supposed to end after the light. <laughs> oh cool, yeah. <laughs> Call it. <laughs>